take very long and then I will give you guys time to finish the test because I know some of us needed to finish the test and other than that we will just take some time to work on the homework so when we start talking about circles we've got all these different names one thing that sometimes throws people off is a chord versus a segment versus a sector so a chord is the length across the circle that is not a diameter a segment is the um i don't even know how to talk about it i can't think of the word that i used to it'll come to me hopefully a segment is literally the space created between the circle and the chord a sector is like a slice of pie a sector is the two radiuses and then the segment created between the radiuses is my sector so i think a sector is in like a slice diameter obviously you know what a diameter is radius you know what that is an arc is just exactly what you think it is it's just a portion of the circumference so it makes an arc caleb you had your hand up wait so like the segment would be the distance between the core the no the segment is this space like all of so i'm trying to make sure i'm not sitting on a cable all of this space. All right, so it's like the distance from like the core maybe to like the outer edge of the circle? The space. Area. The, air, the, the space. Cord, yeah, the, the whole space, not distance, space. All right. So sector and segment are both talking about space. Um, chord, arc, diameter, radius, all of those are talking about length. Okay, so chord is referencing length. Um, I don't know if it helps, but the only other way I really knew of a chord was musical, like a chord. How does like a, a um, guitar or anything like that make music? It's the string between two points. The string between two points. I don't know, in my head that kind of related back to chord. Yeah. Yeah, so there's radii or radians, depending on how we're talking about it. So when we get into unit circle work, we'll use radians, which is essentially using radii. Because well, you were saying radiuses. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, the radiuses is, is not the technical plural form, but radii confuses some people. So sometimes I just say radiuses. All right, so diving into eight one here. Some of this will probably be review. Some of this may be like, well, okay, that's kind of dumb. And some of it may be like, oh, okay, that's useful information. I already have this. Ah, nice. So when we talk about arcs, we have minor arcs and major arcs. And what do you think the difference between a minor arc and a major arc would be? Yeah, what do you think, Caleb? Maybe like, the, like, how, like how, I guess, I guess like maybe how long they are. And how long they are. Now be careful talking about how long they are because remember that length is going to relate back to how big the circle physically is. And these major arc, minor arc, those relate to any size of circle. Isn't like the percent? Well, percent is like it takes up this amount of the circle, not specifically distance. Yeah, so like amount of the circle that it covers is a better way to talk about it than length. Michelle? Ah, so when we talk about a circle, our diameter can break the circle up into halves. And when we talk about arc lengths, we're talking about how much of the perimeter, how much of the circumference is it talking about? Now, the first thing we talk about is the arc measure, and that deals with the amount of degrees. Because we know all of our circles are relative to the radius size, we have to be able to talk about arcs and these pieces not relative to actual size or length, we just need to talk about it relative to the circle. So my arc measure is talking about the angle that makes the arc. So my arc here is from R to T or T to R, and it's made with a 50 degree angle at the center. So my minor arc for, um, or sorry, my measure of RT is 50 degrees, but if I go TQR, that tells me start at T, go through Q and then go to R, 
That's going to be 310. So if I know that angle RT is 50, then I can find the major arc TQR. And the difference between my major and my minor are exactly, uh, I think it was Michelle said, whether it's more or less than half of your circle. So if it's less, it's a minor. If it's more, it's a major. If it's equal. Then it's a diameter. Oh. <laughs> Did you have a question? Um, question? So how do you measure arcs? Like what so it's going to be relative to the size of the circle, right? This is where unit circle comes into play. When we introduced unit circle uh, a couple weeks ago, I think it was, and we talked about the, the value of a radian, and we said that's really a unitless value because the units comes from the size of the radius. So my arc length is always going to be relative to how big is the radius. Right now, that doesn't matter yet. So hang on to that thought. It's a good question. But we just have to like, be able to identify and name everything before we go too deep into this. So arc addition postulate, this is one of those, well, duh. If I have arc AB and I add arc BC, I get arc ABC. Now, the reason that we wouldn't just call it arc AC, why do you think? Why can't I just call it AC, Emma? They might, they might think you mean going the other way around circle. Yeah, there are two options for every arc if I just name it with two points. So when naming an arc, that especially when it's uh, potentially minor, potentially major, we want to try to name it with three points. My arc length, getting to your question, comes back to circumference. We know that circumference equals 2 pi times the radius. So if I know my radius amount, then I can figure out the whole circumference. But an arc length is just going to be a portion of the circumference. What portion is it? Well, it's out of the total circle or out of 360. So all you do is set up the ratio of how does my arc compare to the total circle and multiply it by your circumference, which is really coming back to your 2 pi r. So in order to figure that out, we have to know what the radius is. If I don't know what the radius is, I leave it in terms of radians, which is waiting for a radius to be plugged in. So like, let's say we were given um, a radius of r and asked to calculate this. We'd still end up with our answer in terms of r, even if I knew what the size of this arc was. Once I know what the radius is, then I can actually put it into some kind of concrete terms. I and you guys know how to find the circumference. This should be a review. So naming arcs, the minor arcs of circle O, I just went ahead and put in all the answers here for you. AOD is a central angle, so AD is a minor arc. AC is a minor arc down here. CE is also a minor arc. And DE is also a minor arc. If I wanted to name some major arcs, what would be one major arc for problem one? Calvin? Arc DCE. Yeah. DCE means that I have to start here and go this direction. Now, he could also name that DAE, but either way, it takes him towards A before he gets to E. Caleb? I do have a question. So you said how you want to name with three. If you want to, so how come you can assume DE is a minor arc? Because if it doesn't give you three, you take the shortest take way. Short yep. Take the most direct route, essentially. Right. So another major arc we could say is ADC or AEC. We could say DEA. Like we can just keep kind of moving where we are, but we just name it anyway with three ways. So some minor arcs here. Go ahead and notate a few of them. And you can see our notation is just literally an arc above it. Your what? Oh, yeah, go, man. Do you want me to call it? Would that help? OK. Oh, by the way, is anyone going to see Eli Beard? 
Is he in eighth grade or is he in ninth grade now? He's in That's what I thought. You guys all looked at me like, what? Okay, I have his calculator. If anyone sees him, I don't know if he like donated this to the school or if somehow it ended up down here. But let him know. I have his calculator if you see him. I will try to keep an eye open. Yeah. It is not. I saw it there earlier though, so I can hang. I can hang on to it and figure out whose it is. Oh, this looks like it. Somebody, parents probably. They probably just took it out of like their pen drawer at home. Okay. So I Remember, doubt. No one takes I doubt anyone will claim it. So it's probably yours. So Max, give me another minor arc here. I already gave you PQ. Uh, SP. SP. Lynn, what about another one? RQ. RQ. Yeah, because we know that. If I don't give a third point, I'm going to take the most direct way to get there. Michelle? RS. RS. Are there more? Obviously, I could turn all of these around. Caleb? Uh, SQ. SQ. I think we got them all now. No, there's more. Michelle? PR, do we have... Ah, but because this looks straight, we can probably assume that's the diameter. So we wouldn't use that arc. Or we just know it's probably 180. It's probably half of that circumference. So it's neither a minor or a major. It's your diameter arc. Yeah? You'd have to put a P between S and Q. Ooh. Yeah, so SQ, Calvin's arguing I would need to put a P between it. Why? Because there's two different directions, but if we only say SQ, we assume, now assuming is dangerous, but there are some times that we just have to assume. If you were looking at like a, a, a site plan and somebody just said arc SQ, we'd assume we're talking about the minor. So this really, if we wanted to be specific, we could say SPQ, and then we know we're talking about the minor arc as opposed to the major. Yeah, so why don't you just do that? I mean, it seems easier that you just tell everyone, just no So this, we have to assume, but it's still OK. okay. This is best. If the more details you can give, the better it is. So Megan, when we come down here to our next problem, we're looking at finding the arc measure of BC. Can you use your visual here to find the arc measure? Not the arc length, but the arc measure, which is in degrees. Yeah, it's 32. Because the interior angle at the center of the circle, there's 32 degrees. Carmen, what about the measure for arc BD? Mm. So Calvin, just to drive that point, they don't have to say BCD, because we just assume that BD is talking about the minor. 90 degrees, 90 degrees so 32 plus 58. Get our 90. Now when they say arc A, B, C, it tells me that I have to go through B. So A, B, C, how can I figure this out? Well, there's one other thing here, Michelle. So, right, yeah, so what would we say the arc measure is? It's 180, because A, C is my diameter, this makes my arc measure 180 degrees. And when it asks for the measure of AB, well, because I knew that ABC was the diameter, I can use that to derive arc AB by using the arc addition postulate, which is the same as our angle addition postulate. If I know one is the sum of the other two, I can just take the difference. And Brian, we get a size of 148 yeah, degrees. Yeah, 
if lines appear to be straight, we can assume that they're straight. There was only one problem ever that I've seen in my whole mathematical career where like pretty much everybody said, this is a diameter. And then the test was set up that like, whoops, that was an assumption that you should not have made. I've only ever seen that one time. Normally, if it looks straight, we can assume it's straight. Wait, if, why would they do that? If, wait, did, the like, did that question? I think, I think that literally was an issue with the test. Okay. I think whoever had written that forgot to notate something because if it's not a diameter or if it's not like whatever we're assuming it should be notated a reason why it's not okay. you know what i mean so that's why like cd is notated as 58 degrees yeah like if you haven't been told that it's not it you can assume that it is okay <clears throat> so like here we could assume ps is the diameter because it appears to be straight so if we're looking for the measure of PR, oh, that one's really easy. I was going to say, what? Well, that's, that's, that's so Caleb, what's PR? 77. 77. So then it's complement. By the way, we still write these like angles. We write M for measure of PR. So what then if I want? RS. Um, Michelle? 180 minus 77 would be 103. It would be 103 degrees. It is the supplement of the 77. Which, by the way, somebody asked me this. I think it was a seventh grader. They said, why, like, why do we use the word complementary like multiple different ways? And I think they'd read it in a book or something. Um, so complementary, obviously, we know the mathematical meaning of adds up to 90. 90. But another way that complementary is used is just to mean adds up to what it's supposed to. So when we talk about like complementary percentages, if I know that 60% of people paid with credit cards, how many people, or at what percent paid with some other form? 40%. Those are complementary values. Not complementary like adds up to 90 degrees, but they complement each other. They add up to the total that we look for. So, and I, I'm saying this mainly because up on the last question, I, I said they're complementary with each other. And I didn't mean adds up to 90 degrees. I mean, they work with each other. So there's multiple ways we use complementary. We know adds up to 90 degrees, but we can also say, like depending on what situation we're talking about, just adds up to what it's supposed to be. They are complementary values. Like they're nice with each other. So now when we find the distance of an arc or the length of an arc, and actually thinking about, we may just do our unit circle lesson tomorrow. Why are you in circle? Because like this comes, this is using unit circle information essentially. <clears throat> but don't worry about it. We talked about it once like weeks ago. You don't need to know it yet. We'll, we'll do a lesson on it. So a two foot wide circular track for a camera dolly set up for a movie. A lot of times, guys, when you're watching a, a movie or something, there was a person behind that camera. And if you really think about how stable that shot was, there's a lot of technology into how they film. So a lot of times they have tracks set up and they literally have the camera rolling on a cart. So one person's job is to move the camera. The other person's job is to work the camera. So the radius of the inner circle is eight feet. How much further does a wheel on the outer rail travel than a wheel on the inner rail? This also has to deal with how often race cars have to change tires and which tires they change. So in one turn or one rotation. So if we talk about the inner rotation here. Well, how do we find the distance around a circle? 2 pi r, right? So my inner circle is really going to be 16 pi, which comes out you know, approximately 50, I think it's like 51 something. Ah, 50.26. It's been a minute since I've done that one. 
to seven if we really want to round appropriately. And that would be in feet. So then my outer circle, what changes now dealing with the outer circle? What? Ah, my radius is now 10, so I get 20 pi, Michelle is saying. And 20 times pi gives me 62.8. Were you about to ask, could you figure out the radius using a two foot, or could you figure out the circumference using a two foot radius and then, at, yeah, that's not the radius, yeah, it's a portion of the radius. Yeah. <clears throat> so then the difference between them, approximately 12, it's going to be 12.5. Twelve point five six, yeah. Smart boy does not like it when I have red and green picked up at the same time. Wait, where did you get the? Wait, where does that question? Difference between them. Oh. Sorry, so it asks like how much further. Oh. Crap! It doesn't even realize that I have green picked up now. So this is why standard racetracks don't make much sense. The wheels on the outside of the turn literally travel further than the wheel on the inside of the turn. Ethan, how's this apply to marching band? Uh, probably like three feet or six meters. If a marching band is in straight lines and they go to turn a corner, if you're on the inside of the corner, you're like, yeah, I'm marching the corner. And you're doing tiny little steps. If you're on the outside of the corner, you're like, this sucks, we gotta move. You're like moving really fast and everyone on the inside is just yeah, taking tiny little steps. Everyone on the outside is like running. So if you ever watch bands and they do those big rotating objects, you gotta realize how little the people on the inside are marching and how giant the people on the outside are marching. And if they stay in a straight line, every single person down that line is taking different sizes of steps. So like those giant things like the Ohio State games? Oh, or the big horse. Yeah. So those are Every person's step size has to account for how far away from the center of the circle they are. They do. Right? It yeah. will tell you on your drill sheet, it'll tell you how big of steps you take to get from this point to that point. And there's software that does it for you, but somebody had to write the software. Do you really know how long? Step two feet. You know how far you need to move how many counts you have to get there, oh, and you do the math oh, then, on your own. So, if I have 10 yards to move, and eight counts to get there, I'm gonna be moving pretty quick. That's a standard, hmm? Doesn't what? No, because step size is not relative to leg size, it's relative to step size. All because you're shorter than me doesn't mean that your drill gets to change. But what if your legs are really tiny and you can't step with it? You have to deal with that. Figure out how to march bigger. You just yeah. Or you got to beg somebody to switch you spots in the drill. That's literally like where the math comes down to when people have to write these things. Um, I think that we could do this one because it's the exact same as the other one. So hold on. Let's, we can talk more questions at the end of this. I want to get you guys your homework passed out. Then we can just chat if you guys want. So what is the length of the arc shown in red? So arc X, Y. I want you guys to try to drive this on your own and see if you can figure out, uh, ah, forget it. Let's do A together, then I'll have you guys do B on your own. If I was figuring out the entire circumference, I would just do two times pi times the radius, and we'd be great. So what's my radius here? Eight. Eight. But I'm not doing the entire circle. So since I'm not doing the entire circle, let's look at what portion of the circle I am doing. Well, what is the measure of arc XY? 90 degrees. We see that it is perpendicular. 
not 9, 9D. So, how much of the entire arc is it covering, Brian? A quarter. A quarter, because I can say it is 90 out of 360 of the circle. So, I apply 90 out of 360, which reduces to a quarter. So, we know that this would actually come out to be 16, but 16 times a quarter will come out to be 4. And we get that arc x, y is 4 pi. 4 pi? Um, we my brother-in-law at Thanksgiving. That should, be our, that should be our challenge for pie day. I eat four pies. Pie. I could eat four pies. Dude, that's easy. Wait, what now hold up. This is actually... <laughs> make sure you have a label on this. That's actually four pie inches. Now it says leave your answer in terms of pie, but that doesn't mean that I don't have a label. I know the length of my radius. I know how long this is. This would be approximately 12 inches. A little over. Try, try arc x, p, y, or y, p, x, arc x, p, y, or y, p, x, part b here. Y long, well, XPY specifics? Yes. All right. See, I, I, Sorry, I was going to give you some snarky answer, but also if we look at YP, if it was only giving us YP, that's like the diameter. So now we don't know it for sure, but it sure looks like it. So we know that is 240 degrees. So to find the length of it, No, that is your radius. And that 15 is your radius. So essentially what you want to be thinking about is it's just some ratio times your circumference formula. And that ratio is how much of the circle the arc covers compared to the whole circle. So if I'm trying to set up that ratio, Straveler, yes. what ratio am I going to use? 2 over 3. Why? Because 240 over 360 is, like, you reduce that to 2 thirds. I could chop off the zeros because stacked zeros can disappear. I could divide them both by 12 then. I get 2 thirds. So this covers 2 thirds of your 2 times pi times my radius of 15. So I really, 2 times 5 is going to give me 30, but 2 thirds of 30 gives me 20 pi centimeters. centimeters. And without the M for measure, since we're now talking about length, we just say arc XPY equals 20 pi centimeters. Now the reason that we would ever use radians is if I didn't have the radius, I have nothing to plug in here, I just leave it as radians. And my answer would be in radians because I wouldn't have a unit because I have to have a radius to have a unit. Wait, so how do you, wait could you do that on the calculator? What, what do you mean do stuff? that? Okay, that, that is right there, the red stuff. That is. Oh. Could you do that on a calculator? What do you mean? Like, I right, like with radians, though. Like, what, is it like a specific... Well, what are you trying to do? Solve for the... Because you said the answer would be in radians, right? Could you do that on a calculator, or is that... Let me do you, Lynn? So, what I did at first, because I just want to do it on a calculator, I'm relying on this. Um, I just the thing that you said, which was 240 over 360, or you guys simplified, mm -hmm. I did not. It doesn't, yeah, when you if use a calculator, it doesn't matter if you simplify. Two, 3.14, because I, I didn't want to deal with all the numbers. 
times 15, and then you just divide that by 3.14. Or you could just leave that out. Divide by 3.14. Because she included you multiply by I think I followed you. But easy answer is yes. But really, the trick answer to the question you're asking, you can't solve it till you know what your radius is. So you can get an answer, but if it's in terms of radians, it's in terms of radians. Like, yeah, like we would have an answer, but that wouldn't really tell us anything till we know what our radius is. But like my buddy who's an architect, Maybe they wanted him to drop a plan and they have yet to determine the size of something. Like if you ever walked into a store and there's like a big circular area there, there's like a greeting area or something, like they, when they're drawing up designs, might say, we have a circular space here. We don't know how big the circle is gonna be, but write us a code in the program so that as I change the space, I'll know how much tile I need or something like that. And that's where these sorts of formulas would, would apply. So the last thing to do today, what would be the length of a semicircle if the radius of it was 1.3? So we know the semicircle is how much of the circle? Megan? Yeah, it's half. So we could just do half of my circumference formula of 2 times pi times the radius. And what works out really nice here? Calvin? I have a question. Yeah? When it says length of a semicircle, you're talking arc length. Okay. What else? It seems worded wrong in my head. So they really want you to think about, ooh, that's pretty good. Here's my semicircle. What is this length? Because it's not measurable, because it's a curve, right? We can derive it right here. Well, because when I think length of a semicircle, I thought like the perimeter. That is what we're solving. <laughs> But without, like, this doesn't count. We only want this. But if you wanted the entire perimeter, you just add two of the radius. So, like, you'd have to derive this first regardless, right? And then if I wanted to add this on, I would just add a 2.6. Yeah, good question, though. Yeah, but with us, we're just talking about that uh, arc length. Brian? Oh, the, the answer? Sure, what works really nice here? Well, the two and a half. Yeah. The two and a half. So if you're logic, you just get, then you just get 1.3 pi. Hey, we get 1.3 pi. I was going to ask that. Do you have to? Can you just so like here's the trick. Any semicircle, when you're looking for the arc length, is going to cancel out this relationship. So if you know the radius, it's just your radius times pi and whatever the unit of the radius was. Because all your whole circumference is, is your radius times pi doubled. Mm -hmm. So if you look at half the circle, just don't double it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I will get you guys your homework, and then anybody who needs to finish their test, please come up. Okay. Especially when you want to pass things out, so I can do the test. Thank you.